Welcome to iHnani.com. This is the fourth video of Computer Fundamentals, Part 2. Level 1. Computer Internals. In this video, I will continue with the CPU and other hardware components that are housed in a computer case. CPU The CPU is the brain of the computer. Also referred to as the processor, or central processor, the CPU is where calculations take place. This picture, shows the front and back view, of a recent and one of the fastest desktop processors, Core i7 from Intel with a feature size of 45 nanometer and maximum speeds of 3.33 gigahertz the cpu executes and interprets programs and processes data in terms of computing power the cpu is the most important element of a computer a cpu is housed in a single chip a modern cpu is usually small and square with many short rounded metallic connectors on its underside some older cpus have pins instead metallic connectors the cpu is inserted directly into a cpu socket pin side down on the motherboard as we saw earlier in the cpu socket section several forms of cpus exist but only two of them are really used the pin grid array PGA, and the Land Grid Array, LGA. With the type PGA, the CPU will have pins to fit in the socket holes, but with LGA, the CPU will not have such pins and will just sit on the socket. A CPU should be compatible with the motherboard manufacturer's specifications. Typically, CPU speed is measured in number of instructions per second, or hertz. Since the CPU clock speeds have approached theoretical limits of physics, companies are adding multiple cores and fast gashing mechanisms to improve CPU speed. While current CPUs use electronics, future CPUs will use light which will increase the speed exponentially. After running even a short while, modern CPUs, can get very hot, because of the number of calculations that go on inside due to the complexity of modern day softwares. To help dispel this heat, it is necessary to attach a heat sink and a small fan directly on top of the CPU. Typically, the heat sink and the fan come bundled with a CPU purchase. For a detailed coverage on CPU, please check out our tutorial on the same. RAM, or Main Memory RAM, acronym for Random Access Memory, is also referred to as the Main Memory. RAM is a type of computer memory that can be accessed randomly, that is, any byte of memory can be accessed without touching the preceding bytes. RAM is the most common type of memory found in computers and other devices such as printers. In this picture you can see a typical RAM module that is used in a PC. RAM, is a fast storage that is directly accessible by the CPU, and is used to store the currently executing program, and immediately needed data. PCs use RAM of various kinds, two of the commonly used are DRAM. Dynamic Random Access Memory, SRAM, Static Random Access Memory. Some of the common DRAM modules that are being used are, SDRAM, Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. DDRSDRAM, Double Data Rate Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory. RDRAM, Rambus Dynamic Random Access Memory. DDR2SDRAM. Double Data Rate 2 Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory DDR3 SDRAM, Double Data Rate 3 Synchronous Dynamic Random Access Memory The DDR and DDR2, are largely used now as they are faster, and demand less power.
the DDR3 is mainly used on graphic cards so far. Main memory is much faster than mass storage devices like hard disks or optical disks, but is usually volatile, meaning that they lose their contents when the power is turned off. It is also quite expensive for a given capacity when compared to most mass storages. Main memory is generally not suitable for long-term or archival data storage. For a detailed tutorial on RAM, please check out our tutorial on the same. ROM ROM, acronym for read-only memory is a computer memory on which data has been pre-recorded. In this picture you can see typical ROM chips. Once data has been written onto a ROM chip, it cannot be removed and can only be read. ROM is mainly used to distribute firmware. Firmware is a software program that is specific to the hardware. Unlike RAM, ROM retains its contents even when the computer is turned off. ROM is referred to as being non-volatile, whereas RAM is volatile. Most computers contain a small amount of ROM to store the boot program. Booting is the process of loading the first piece of software for starting a computer. A variation of a ROM is a PROM, programmable read-only memory. PROMs are manufactured as blank chips, on which data can be written. For a detailed tutorial on ROM, please check out our tutorial on the same. BIOS BIOS is the acronym for Basic Input Output System. In the picture you can see a typical chip containing BIOS software. BIOS is a small software that is stored in ROM and built into the motherboard. This is the first code that runs when a PC is powered on. On PCs, the BIOS contains all the code that is required to control the keyboard, display screen, disk drives, serial communications, and a number of miscellaneous functions. The primary function of the BIOS is to load and start an operating system. When the PC starts up, it first identifies system devices such as the display, keyboard and mouse, hard disk, CD and or DVD drive and other hardware. The BIOS then loads the OS and gives the control of the PC. This process is known as booting or booting up. For a detailed tutorial on BIOS, please check out our tutorial on the same. Hard disk Hard disk is a type of mass storage device used in computers. In this picture you can see a typical hard disk used in today's computers. Unlike the RAM, they do not lose the data when the power is off, and unlike ROM it is not read-only, we can also write into it. However, mass storage devices are not as fast as a RAM, or ROM. The most common form of mass storage in personal computers is the hard disk. Hard disk is a magnetic disk, on which data can be stored. The term hard, is used to distinguish it from other disk types, such as, floppy disk, etc. Hard disks, can store enormous amounts of data, and are cheaper when compared to other forms of storage. However, hard disks are less portable than other mass storage devices, although it is possible to buy removable hard disks. They are still bigger in sizes and weight. For a detailed tutorial on hard disks, please check out our tutorial on the same. Optical disk drives Optical disk is a type of storage medium, which uses lasers to read and write data. The optical disk was invented in 1958. From the early analog optical disc for video recording, to currently used Blu-ray discs, they have gone through a lot of changes in its technology since then. Initially, 
optical discs were used to store music and computer software. Compact discs also known as CDs, were the most commonly used optical discs. It could store up to a maximum of 700 megabytes of data. CDs were replaced by DVDs, which could store much more than the CDs. A common type of DVD can store up to 4.7 gigabytes of data, on a standard 12 cm, single-sided, single-layer disc. Next in the list are the Blu-ray disc, which uses blue-violet lasers, and can store up to 50 gigabytes of data. There are, new types of discs, that are in development to store more than one terabyte of data, such as, holographic versatile disk, LSR, and protein coated disk. For a detailed tutorial on optical disk drives, please check out our tutorial on the same SMPS, or power supply unit. SMPS, is the power supplier to the computer. In this picture, you can see a typical SMPS used in today's PCs. SMPS, stands for Switched Mode Power Supply, also called as Switching Mode Power Supply, or simply Switcher. The SMPS, provides regulated direct current power, at the several voltages as required by the motherboard and accessories such as disk drives and cooling fans. When a PC is plugged into standard electrical outlet, the SMPS in the computer converts AC electric power to low voltage DC power for the internal components of the computer. It also regulates the voltage to eliminate spikes and surges common in most electrical systems. Power supplies are rated in terms of the number of watts they generate. The more powerful the SMPS, the more watts it can provide to components. For a detailed tutorial on different power supply units, please check out our tutorial on the same. In the next video of Computer Fundamentals, Part 2, Level 1, I will continue with the input devices. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials how to videos and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Check out the forum topic related to this tutorial on the site for all your questions.